Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. This is Florida Natural Farming. I hope you subscribe, like, and comment to my channel. And today I'm going to do a video on where does our water come from? Because we don't, we don't water anything here. Nothing's watered. These are Rolinia trees that have never been watered. They also haven't fruited, but uh, I believe that has to do with the uh, spraying of the glyphosate. This is like was the worst part of our entire property. It's right along the road, and they spray glyphosate on that chain link fence. I'm sure for 30 years. So I'm positive that has something to do with that. Uh, probably if I put them in a different location, I'm sure they would fruit sooner. They are going to fruit. I'm not worried about it. They're just too healthy. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't rush trees. I, I don't give them nutrients. I give them whole foods raw zebu manure or compost that basically is this, my daily manure that I just apply, uh, drop on the ground and then I wait a year and then it's turned into soil. Uh, so they get their water from the fungi. We've, I've talked about the fungi being responsible for the water cycle in Florida, which is why we don't walk on anything because uh, we promote the uh, the underground organism, superorganism that is a fun fungal hyphae fused together with roots. <clears throat> That's like a above ground uh, living prairie system, only it's below ground. It's a it's a hunt and capture system. These mangoes always seem to produce well, uh, but they also have huge giant trees near them. Just the ones that are near the huge giant trees. So there's a, uh, they transfer water. I said it's a theory of mine uh, more than a year ago and uh, where the fungal supplies the water to the plants here. Uh, but there's a name for it. Cytoplasmic streaming. It's when fluid moves through uh, like humans or plants, the movement of fluid through humans and plants, but it also moves through fungi. And they've shown that, they did a study and they've shown that saprophytic fungi, fungi can move large quantities of bodies of water long distances <clears throat> to plant hosts and to the superorganism, with the help of the superorganism. So I'm going to talk, I'm going to go look at uh, trees that are uh, uh, continuous fruiters here. You know, they fruit uh, all four seasons. Uh, mostly they're garcinias. In fact, they all are, I think. Um, so the, the movement of uh, water to the plant has enabled us to not have to water anything. I don't water anything when I plant it in and I don't water anything ever after that. So I also plant during drought and I don't follow rules that other people follow. Um, I hate to dog on University of Florida, but that is where woke resides. I mean, <laughs> where woke has died and It's in the agricultural systems. I'm not sure about their medical uh, systems, but they don't, they don't give any information on organic growing in Florida. And Florida is definitely the easiest place to grow, possibly in the world, organically. But because of the anti-woke dogma that they use to teach people um, using chemicals, driving on it, mowing on it, and spraying glyphosate and every type of bug spray known to man, they've completely killed and uh, uh, basically ruined the plant's ability to um, collect water on its own and elicit an immune response uh, to the biology in the soil because it's all dead. It's just, I'm so embarrassed to be a Floridian, <laughs> but I love Florida, and I know there's some really great people here, 
But really, uh, it's just appalling to me to think that I have to do all my own uh, research and to learn how to grow organically. And if I tried to share it on uh, uh, pro-chemical platforms like TFF, they ran me off. Basically called me a quack. Well, I obviously know what I'm doing and I'm sure that our mangoes are the best mangoes in Florida and in the US, period. We don't water them. We rely on the fungi to do that. It does it. It does it with all plants. <clears throat> uh, possibly if you're in a yard. So I'm at the MB tree and this tree, I don't know if it fruits, probably doesn't fruit year round, but it gives multiple crops. And now that the weather's cooled off, it uh, seems like it's holding the fruit. Um, this little tiny tree has earned more than a thousand dollars every year for the last three years. I don't want to go over there because I don't want to walk on it, but after it bloomed, I gave it two huge piles of manure, or not manure, it's not manure, it's, it's hay and pea basically with a, some manure in it. And it's full of fungi. Here's one right here. It's like, I don't want to kill it, but it's like gone down, uh, died, or is dying, or Oh, here's a ripe fruit here, see? I love MB fruit. So I guess it can set some fruit in the heat. That probably should have ripened a little longer. Mm. But it's been so long since I've had one. Mm. But Sorry. I love MB fruit. Or African mangosteen. Never been watered. Doesn't need water. People are repulsed by this uh, weed look in here, but if you have something that's that healthy, you know that anything that you... Uh, that's why a plant like they do teach in forestry, small little trees or direct sown seeds directly into this. I just put the shovel down, push it out, put the tree in, without any soil and tap it down and move on. There's a little cashew from this year. Our mangoes have been coming up, but the rabbits have been getting a lot of them. And I, uh, I uh, get a little upset by it, but the rabbits are not mine to kill. They're not anybody is to kill unless you're doing it for food but to do it for fun to protect your tree and you live in a city yard that's what i need to finish talking about city yards so in florida everything's on septic there's entire cities here where they're all septic we have the most sept septics in the entire nation and yet we're on calcareous rock so everything moves through the water here directly into the water except if you've been driving on it which causes compaction and then it just runs off into the water somewhere else. It's very sad to think that we are so far behind everyone else on organic in a spot that's so biologically active and is the easiest place in the world to grow organic. <clears throat> I think the agricultural systems here are really screwed up, even the organic ones. Organic agriculture isn't really organic anymore. Uh, they use uh, uh, they use uh, water soluble fertilizers and do hydroponics. But anyway, the city lots, so they're all on septic, and then they all put in sprinklers. Uh, I know that Sebastian does all the new houses. They get a, a shallow well and a septic system, little, little tiny lots. Well, that sewer sludge that's going into your water, which is full of forever chemicals and your water is being distributed into your into your your yard via pvc so it's a guaranteed the entire city is a super fun site of uh of uh forever chemicals people that use uh fertilizers uh water soluble fertilizers indoor <clears throat> and then have plastic pots you're breathing all that sewage sludge in and the chemicals and the toxic plastic. 
I don't think you can escape it. I don't think I can escape it. But I know that nature is the only cure for what is wrong, what all these pollutants. So I'm kind of totally into <laughs> quantum biology. And I've been like in a hole of watching Sarah Pugh, Dr. Sarah Pugh from uh, the UK. And let me get over to the uh, other trees that are uh, fruiting. That's a cashew that looks great. I put a big pile of manure. So the, the fungi not only distributes water, but in the process it distributes uh, a nutrients. Collects, captures and collects and distributes nutrients. These people that like add one nutrient at, at a time to your agricultural systems, what do you do about the rare earths? You surely can't afford them. Those are needed for life. Uh, all the nutrients are here, period. The more biodiverse you are, the more nutrients you have. This is like a super healthy system. That's beautiful too. Beautiful. <clears throat> this is a chumpa jack tree. That's one I planted from seed. I got one as a gift, but I forgot where I put it. And somebody from the Indian River Rare Fruit Council but I don't go to that because it's a like a pro-chemical platform and they kind of look at me like I'm weird even though guaranteed I don't have a farm like this I don't think there's another one like this in the in the, in Florida uh, guaranteed there isn't probably in the US we used to be biodynamic certified I am a total health food junk I don't take supplements you have to take supplements through food. I have a whole regimen that I do in the morning um, to feed my gut bacteria of uh, dried, powdered, whole foods. <clears throat> a lot of the stuff is from India. Bharat is what they want to be called now, or Hindustan. I think that's great. I always wondered what the original name was, but never bothered to look it up because they never changed it. But they're overcoming their trauma from being colonized for so long and are probably going to show us how amazing they are in the next 20 years. <clears throat> We're on our way out here because we spray so much glyphosate and we think that we're uh, feeding the world. No, you're not. You're making methane from corn and then you're getting, you, you complain about people getting help, but you're okay if the rich farmers get help so that they can make methane. That's socialism for certain people. It just makes no sense. It's always the people that are getting it that don't want anybody else to have it. I think everyone should be able to have free food, healthy food, clean food, water, and colleges, schools of higher learning. But uh, I know where there's one school of higher learning that isn't. It's the anti-woke, anti-organic. <coughs> Uh, I'm not sure what's wrong with them, but I'm going to keep up on it until they correct all the the uh, misinformation they put out there and they, they're teaching people to pollute via chemicals in Florida. Obviously, you don't need them if I'm able to do it here. So the whole fungi uh, uh, water cycle thing, it works because of the big trees. It's a pressure system. They push the water into the trees and up to the trees, and they suck the trees suck the water up through photosynthesis. The fungi harvest, excrete uh, a substance on um, uh, our calcareous rock and create calcium oxalate, which goes in every plant. All plants have it. And then during times of drought, the plants, to conserve water during times of drought, shut off uh, uh, the intake of uh, carbon dioxide from the air and internally break down uh, the calcium oxalate to get uh, carbon and water for photosynthesis energy. Uh, so here's another tree that continuously blooms. This is Garcinia intermedia. 
people seem to want to know this information, but I'm self-taught. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, everything I do, I learned on my own, basically. I, I did. I tried to go to school in the 80s, college, but I found it so boring. I was an agricultural business major that I took my, um, my uh, scholarship money and moved to L.A. basically with like $500. Got a job at Universal Studios. Ended up managing tele television publicity uh, uh, for syndication all before I was 24. <clears throat> By the time I was 24, I realized I did not want to work for that and I was drawn to growing plants. And fortunately, I met my partner of 38 years and <clears throat> I see this uh, citrus looks great. This is a pomelo. We grow so many different types of citrus. Mm. I've been eating the skin on the intermedia. This is very good. So, <clears throat> anyway, they support me wholeheartedly and always have. Not monetarily. Uh, we made money together, thankfully, and um, I was able to retire at 39. And... Um, discover how to grow via this farm. It's because of this farm. I feel the information comes to me through the farm. Uh, it's through sight, sense, our sight, smell, and taste. Water contains memory, soil contains memory. I believe all information is stored in the soil. But you can't kill your soil, you have to have life in it. I, f I feel that's where the information comes to me from. And then I, it's theories. I, I, de I develop theories in my head and then I look to see if there's a name for uh, the transfer of water to plants. Uh, yeah, cytoplasmic streaming. <clears throat> On below ground, the fungi fuses with other fungi, they fuse, all fuse, everything fuses together, all these roots, everything's connected. It's like uh, everything's grafted together. And it creates a super organism in a healthy system like this. <clears throat> so uh, the bananas, I've been planting, I've been doing, uh, dividing bananas again. So I'm up to 322 divides. And I don't water them in and I usually don't cut the leaves off, but I need to do it on this big one. I just did it yesterday, and it's tilting a little bit, so sometimes they tilt, so I fix it. But yeah, these heliconias, University of Florida says to water them th uh, three times a week, and I've never watered any of them, ever. Even, I even divide them in the winter and plant them here. I've planted all these from one single rhizome. We have hundreds of them. The ginger... I haven't even bothered to look, but I know that they tell you to water that too, probably three times a week. Um, our water is totally polluted here. So Dr. Sarah Pugh, she's amazing. And she had another doctor, I'm so sorry, I can't remember her name, but please look her up, P-U-G-H, on YouTube. I don't go on Facebook. I think that is like where, where anti-woke goes. <clears throat> Oh, anti-woke. I mean, we are a little laughing stock. Nobody wants to be like Florida. We're known for being stupid. I mean, is that what we want? I mean, that's not what I want. It's not everyone, but it's the people that push the dogma and uh, force everyone else to read it. And then they do enough studies that are tweaked by unscrupulous people to make money. And they put it out there and it dilutes the truth. <clears throat> Look at these things. These don't need water either. Nothing needs water. And so I've always talked about my plants that I do in pots that I don't water. Because I felt like the fungi was supplying the water. Something was supplying it. I really didn't know the name for it. Cytoplasmic. 
cytoplasmic streaming. That's why. So this is the uh, Garcinia lindero, and this is only, uh, it's, I think it's barely three, it's not even three weeks old. That is, that is, I have three of them I put in pots because I wanted to see how fast they grew because uh, on the bag it said they're fast growing. I got, I get them from fruit lovers. I don't buy from the other fruit sellers. I only buy from fruit sellers that grow fruit trees. <clears throat> I have had excellent luck with all of Oscar's seeds, except for the Luke's originally, but that nobody knew that you couldn't store Garcinia seeds for a long time. I didn't know that you need to plant fresh seeds. Uh, Achachiro, that's why we started this farm, was for the Garcinia humilis. So beautiful here. So the, the bananas improve the soil. The bananas grass is a a uh, is a uh, a fungal uh, fungi resides in grass. Uh, they go hand they go together. So uh, probably because they're full of water and they provide the pressure system needed to prevent stuff from freezing. and to provide water during times of drought to the trees. I don't have trees die from drought ever. Even the ones I plant, cacao during drought doesn't die. I could not plant a jabata kaba that I bought from the sellers because they've been grown using uh, systemic or uh, water soluble fertilizers for so long. And I would have to leave it in a pot of uh, probably cow manure mixed with sand, the native soil. A little tiny bit. Biologicals is a little tiny bit. That's another thing, uh, uh, University of Florida. They did kind of give some, because I, I looked up the Achachiro and they kind of gave some information. It, but uh, they, it was all, they said do it like the lychees and the recommendations was for... Uh, quarter cup or something like that of fertilizer every six weeks. You know, water soluble fertilizers and water them for the first four years. <clears throat> Nobody even talks about uh, fungi except for me, I think, in Florida. We're killing everything. Uh, so Dr. Sarah Pugh did the, uh, I watched this thing on the doctor that she did a, something on glyphosate. I forgot to finish that. And um, glyphosate, they figure, is responsible for all kinds of diseases, like uh, quantum biologists figure. A lot of it's theory, but they're very intelligent people, and I believe it. Um, uh, autism, uh, uh, all kinds of different issues, G gut death, you know, microbiome death, um, lots of stuff. Uh, deuterium, uh, not being able to remove deuterium from your system. Uh, it's a hydrogen that is a, not a real good hydrogen that uh, if you are eating foods with our beer, beer is full of glyphosate. In America, it needs to be banned. They say that it's worse than DDT because it's used so much. I believe it. I can see what's gone on with our people where we think that being awake is bad. <laughs> uh, that's only uh, because our population has gotten so stupid. And that's the only reason why somebody would think that. It just totally bizarre. So this is a Garcinia brasiliensis and it fruits non-stop. I really like this fruit. Mm -hmm. As you can see it's got little fruits on it. Usually it has a ton of fruit on it but it just got done with a huge crop um, and now it's just spitting out little a little bit. So this is Garcinia gardneriana. This fruits year round. So these Garcinias are full of bioactive compounds that are uh, beneficial for your health. But 
If you're not eating 100% uh, clean diet of whole foods, then you aren't going to get the beneficial effects from them. It doesn't work like that. You have to have a clean system. <clears throat> so below ground, everything's connected into a super organism. Well, above ground, we're all connected through water and air. <clears throat> what your neighbor does, you do. So we may be using the glyphosate here, but it's moving through the air and going around the world. <clears throat> then they use fungicides. Oh my God. These are really good too. Um, the uh, Garcinia gardneriana. Fruit to your rum. Delicious fruit. I need to work my way over to the to the Garcinia madruno. A really amazing fruit. Um, our little tree started fruiting when it was really small and never been watered, was planted in full sun, never had burnt leaves. All these issues that people are having growing plants is because you're growing them in pots. And then they actually, I mean, I, I try to read sometimes some, some of the stuff just, just to see uh, the level of anti-wokeness I find there and the dogma that people repeat that's all wrong that's endorsed and pushed by University of Florida just like the uh, pharmaceutical companies always the drug the drug the America's drug dealers the pharmaceutical companies state-sponsored drugs pushing statins well a quarter of our brain is made up of statins According to Dr. Pugh, I believe it. Uh, she has no reason to lie. I'm uh, not statins. Car cholesterol. <laughs> Sorry. A quarter of your brain is cholesterol, so they want you to take statins. Every time I go to the doctor, they suggest I take statins because my cholesterol is three, like three points above the norm. But yet I have uh, really good uh, cognitive abilities and um, I'm skinny and um, I work out and I eat well, but they don't tell you that the, your test varies hour by hour. So the results are going to be different depending on what time of the day you take them. And that you need cholesterol for inflammation. Inf uh, cholesterol uh, is produced to prevent inflammation. We're all highly inflamed because of our pollution. And just li having to live in this this modernized electronic uh, money society we've created here, we're on our way out. And um, as a society, or as a civilization here, obviously we're on our way out. Everyone's so sick um, because our failure to adapt. Um, all because people want money. So this is a Garcinia madruna. And look at the fruit on it. Oh my God. The bumpy lemon. The chirichi willow. Mmm. I love it. So that fruits, you're around here. We don't need to water it. Never have. A lot of our other Garcinias are going to be fruiting soon. The Lukes, the Hombromiana, uh, flowered. Uh, our female tree flowered for the first time two years ago, but then we got the freeze. This is a, a oil nut from Bharat. Is it Bharat? I hope it is. Hindustan. I like Hindustan. I really believe in Hinduism. Uh, that seems to be what I just believe. I don't know. I have a strong uh, attraction for all things India. Um, and I mean, this farm was uh, based off of, you know, my uh, reading of uh, descriptions of what uh, the land of milk and honey. So trees of purpose. <clears throat> and then I got the miniature zebu and discovered the miracle of their manure. 
and what incredible beings they are. My partner is so amazing. He can take a completely wild bull, zebu bull, and lay down on the ground and tap it and say, lay down and the bull will lay down next to him. Both bulls. Milk, wild ass cows that, need, that are having babies for the first time. I wish it was me, but it's not, it's him. He's able to do that. And it's really astonishing to me because I've had animals my whole life. And as a child, I would spend time with my animals. I had sheep, I used to show sheep and cows and pigs and do livestock judging competitions, played the flute. I was always first chair. I got in high school band when I was in eighth grade and got first chair. It's a little intimidating, but um, I got teased so much. Hey, you gonna play the skin flute? Uh, guys just didn't play the flute in California back then where I lived, even though Jethro Tull was there. But anyway, uh, I didn't pursue it. And uh, my passion is, is growing. So as a child, I used to daydream about this place. So this place that I created as an adult uh, that I fantasized about as a, as a very young child of like six, seven, eight. All my life I thought about it and here I am in it now. So I'm thinking of the next chapter, you know, quantum phenomena. So since I created this place in my mind as a child, I'm creating the place I wanna be as when I move on, when I cross over to the next reality. And the, the, the picture I'm painting is of a, uh, you know, a, a place in India uh, ancient place in India with trees of purpose, uh, the land of milk and honey. It's basically the same thing. I guess it just goes on and on and on, but that's what I want and that's where I'm going to go. I truly believe that. Uh, I always believed in visualization. Uh, so visualizing what I want and Visually, visualizing outcomes, it's always served me well. My intuition has always served me well. I could pretty much size somebody up within the first five minutes of meeting them. Not everyone clicks, clicks with me. That's why I said it has to be like a one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one people when they come over here because I get affected by people. I think it's because I was damaged. Damaged people make the best healers. Trying to heal the planet teach people organic growing, uh, the, it's, not, it's not the modern uh, annual growers of today. Sure, they can do uh, multi-plant uh, cover crops and systems, but none of them put in permanent systems. And unless you're putting permanent systems into the, the agriculture system, strips of permanent systems, you're not gonna have the life, the funk I needed to provide the nutrients to give you success. It's just big, huge, giant swaths of annuals with no native prairies in there. You got to put them back in our natural, we got to put the natural systems back in. I believe California's water troubles is because they put all these roads and drove over and spray glyphosate and all those almond, almond and grape fields in the, in the Central Valley. So the redwoods and the fungi couldn't transport water up to the sequoia. I believe the sequoias and the redwoods are so big because the mountains in California are so big. I spent lots of time as a child in the giant redwood groves before the marijuana people got there. Well, they were there, but they were a lot, a lot more civilized in the 60s, 70s. <sighs> anyway, part science fiction, part gardening. Anyway, this is Eric at Florida Natural Farming. Hope I don't have food all over my mouth. These are my seeds I have to plant now. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And I think hopefully we can fix things. Uh, let's try to be smarter. University of Florida, please give us an organic, an organic solution to growing. Thank you. Have a great day.